Hey there everyone, Dr. Beth Westy here, and I wanted to come on and talk about estrogen dominance, what this is, and some important topics to really dive into with estrogen and the issues it can cause you. So, estrogen dominance essentially means that you have more estrogen than progesterone. And how do you know? Oftentimes people will just look at some symptoms, things that you're struggling with, and say, yep, that kind of sounds like estrogen dominance. That's a way to do it. What my favorite thing to look at is Dutch test. This is a sample of a Dutch test report that we would get. We actually get to see your estrogen levels in comparison with progesterone and testosterone, really seeing the full balance of hormone in your body. And, mm, and this is the page that it looks really confusing. It looks really overwhelming, um, but it's amazing to see the exact pathways of estrogen as it works through the system, right? So we can see how your body goes through phase one and then phase two of estrogen metabolism or detoxification in the system. Phase three is the gut. So we always talk about gut issues um, and you can see I have that on here as well, but that plays a huge role in how your system is functioning. So how do you get the Dutch test? Well, this is something we do in the 12 week challenge. I'm going to put a link right here in the comments for you to get on the wait list for the next 12 week challenge. If you are not on that list already, and it does fill uh, within about 24 hours once the registration link is released. Um, so just an FYI, you're going to want to get on that list as soon as possible. <laughs> um, but estrogen dominance. So this can cause a lot of issues when you have this imbalance of estrogen, right? Uh, again, estrogen is higher. This one shows that it's above range here. Does yours have to be above range? No, it can just be higher than the amount of progesterone that you have. Sometimes people say, oh, we'll just get progesterone. That'll help it. But if your system is having a harder time processing it, yeah, then just adding progesterone doesn't necessarily just fix the issue. We have to work with how your body is making, producing, and maintaining estrogen. And those are the things that we focus on once we know exactly what the issue is, which again, we look at through Dutch test. So estrogen dominance, PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, there's different types of PCOS. You can have estrogen be an issue, estrogen and testosterone or estrogen and androgen. Um, you can have insulin resistance, a lot of other things like that. This is a more complex issue than a lot of people think because PCOS does not always present the same for everybody. This was something that I actually struggled with and actually started the work that I do now. Um, I had cysts that were enormous and would burst and it was very, very painful. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody was talking to me about this actually earlier today and she was like, yeah, yeah. You, I had to call your husband to have him come pick you up off the floor because you couldn't get off the floor at work. And I was like, yep, I remember that. Not a good day. Not a good day. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely one thing. If you guys want me to do a whole video on PCOS specific things, more than happy to do it. Just let me know. Um, you can put a comment below or message me if you don't feel comfort comfortable commenting. Um, but this is a really complex issue. Fibroids, also very complex. Why the body builds up fibroids and why it has these reactions. Again, what is going on with estrogen that the system will not clear it out. Endometriosis is another one. Um, this is your body creates endometrial tissue outside of the uterus. So you can have it everywhere. There's a lot of women that have a lot of pain in their abdomen. And it's not like, um, again, everybody's experience is different. But for example, if you have pain with ovulation or something, you can feel that in one spot, like right there. And the timing of it is very specific. With endometriosis pain, you can have pain but in a lot of different areas and it can shift and change. If you have to go to the bathroom, really, like if you if your bladder's full, it can cause pain because of endometriosis, because of the pressure there, right? Same thing with like a fibroid, just depending on where it is physically in your abdomen, different things can cause that pressure. If you have say a big gas bubble working its way through your intestine and it comes near some endometriosis or a fibroid or a cyst, right? It can cause that pain. If you have other inflammation in your digestive system, it can cause some endometrial pain, pain that can be in different areas. Like, oh my gosh, it's really painful in my upper abdomen, or now it's on this side, or now it's on this side, or I have pain here and it wraps around to this other part over here. Gosh, this is weird. It's not a normal pattern. Yeah. You can have endometrial tissue go anywhere in your abdomen. Yeah. Yeah. That also causes inflammation. That type of we'll just call it scar tissue or other tissue that gets built up then can interfere with how your other organs function in your abdominal cavity. That's the bear of it with endometriosis. Ugh, bear of it.
feels like a bear is ripping your insides out sometimes. Not a good time either. Right, right. So it's important to understand that these are things that can happen because your estrogen is out of control, right? Again, how do we know exactly what it is? Dutch test, we take a close look at it. Other things that can cause, um, you know, reactions in your system, you can be fatigued. This is exhausting, right? To being pain like this, to have these things be recurrent again and again, this is exhausting. You can be just, oh yeah, I'm tired, I need to take a nap. No, this is like physical exhaustion physical exhaustion and can impact cortisol levels, things like that. Um, you're going to have weight gain and weight loss resistance from things like this. Weight loss resistance with estrogen issues, huge. Any, any reason that you have weight creep on, sure, but then ugh, no matter what you do, won't come off, will not come off. That's that weight loss resistance piece of it. Um, and then other PMS or cycle issues, other hormone issues are going to be related to this. Again, we'll talk more about this with this, and if you want me to do a video on this more specifically, just let me know, drop a comment below. Why does this happen? This is, it's not like fatigue is unreal. Yes, right? This is one of the most common questions that I get. If this is, you know, when we're looking at things, we're like, oh, this is what's going on. Why? Why does this happen? <sighs> that is the million dollar question. Why this happens. It's never a clear, easy answer because there's so many things that impact this. So here are some of the things that you can think about for your own life to really focus on and say, okay, am I doing all the things that I can do to help improve this? So one of the things is genetics. Like for some people, you'll have higher estrogen levels or you'll genetically, you're just, those are the, that's the cards you're dealt, right? There's genetics, there's epigenetics, there's all these other things. Again, if you want me to do a whole video construct on that, I absolutely can. But just know that some people, you know, you're, you're, give, you're dealt a tougher hand than other people in terms of the hormones, uh, hormones that you have to process and handle, and it's not as fun, right? Yeah, genetics. Endocrine disruptors. These are other chemicals, toxins, things like that that are in your environment, right? A lot of people are familiar with, oh yeah, plastics. You know, you don't, don't use things with plastic because they're endocrine disruptors. Or um, dryer sheets endocrine disruptors, like they're going to mess up your hormones. These are chemicals and things in the environment which mess up your hormones. Um, there is, this is like a never ending list of things to look at. You want safe, non-toxic products as much as possible that you come into contact with. This is everything in your home, um, everything from your mattress, your um, clothing that you wear, fabrics, um, sheets, everything in your bedroom, um, like air fresheners and stuff are often like uh, Febreze stuff or those things that you plug in, endocrine disruptors, right? Everything in your bathroom, everything in your bathroom, shampoo, conditioner, soap, toothpaste, makeup, face wash, all that stuff, right? Everything you use to clean your house, look in your, your closet, your cleaning closet, um, or your, uh, um, under your sink in the kitchen, all that stuff. What do you use to wash your clothes with? What do you use to wash your dishes with in the dishwasher? You know, those soaps can have, can be endocrine disrupting if you're not using safe products. So again, that's a whole other <laughs> thing to look at, but that can feed into more estrogen dominance. So if you're somebody who are like, yeah, genetically, oof, yeah, my mom and my aunts and my cousins have all had hormone issues. Yep. I've had hormone issues since I started my period. Yep. Of course. Oh yeah. I've never been in a place where I've lived that has great clean products. I've always had products that have had, you know, toxins in them. Okay. That can be a factor. Stress huge factor here in terms of estrogen processing and everything. S stress is inflammatory and does so many, I bet that's, this should be a whole video on stress. Um, but stress plays a huge role in how well your body can go through and handle this. If you're under a lot of stress, it's going to be a heck of a lot harder for your body to process through and maintain the right amount of estrogens for your system. So if you have a stressful life, right? That's just, I mean, we all go through stressful times in life, but if you are under a lot of chronic stress, yeah, that's going to be 10 times harder for you then. Mm -hmm. Liver dysfunction. If you've not heard the term non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, yeah, that's a thing. You can Google it, but it means that your liver is not really processing and detoxing like it should. So it's not taking care of that estrogen like it should. Oh my gosh, what? And that's where we talk about phase one and two of the estrogen detoxing. Phase three is in the gut. So if you have gut issues, if you're bloated or constipated, diarrhea regularly, switch off between them. Yep. There you go. And then again, there's other things on this list. These, this is almost a never ending list. 
almost a never ending list. Um, that's the frustrating thing. Why is this happening? What, what do I have to do? The best thing that you can do is to take control of the things that you know you can take control of. Sometimes the genetics, oh, that's, that's, it is what it is. So we move forward from that, right? Okay, what can I do to make sure I have only clean, safe products in my house? How can I work with my stress levels the most? Decrease my stress and then help my body manage it better. How can I help my liver? How can I help my gut? How can I make sure I'm supporting my hormones with my um, lifestyle, with my nutrition, with my exercise, with everything? And that's where we work with, um, you know, women in the 12 week challenge. There's other resources I have, of course, my book, The Female Fat Solution. This is on Amazon. This talks all about how to eat for your hormones and your cycle and everything. And then if you don't have a cycle, but you're still worried about estrogen or have hot flashes or things like that, if you want me to do a whole video on hot flashes, let me know because that's been a hot topic recently. Um, but The Female Menopause Solution, also on Amazon. Um, I also have a podcast called The Female Health Solution. And then my YouTube channel is called Dr. Beth Westy. You can subscribe to stay updated on all the things. But just so you know, if you are feeling like, oh my gosh, I have things going on. I have fatigue, weight gain. I have issues here. I think I have endometriosis or maybe I have some cysts. I'm not sure, but I definitely have some of these things that are a factor. What else could it be? That's what we find out, right? And, and it's important that you understand why some of these things are happening so you can help not only take care of what's going on, but also make sure it's not just coming back again and again and again. Because if you do the hard work, of going through and cleaning up your diet and really working with your hormones and trying to level out your estrogen. But then, you know, you have a lot of stress and other things in your life that just help it reoccur again later, a year later, you have to start all over again. No, make sure if you go through the work to help your hormones in your system right now, you're giving yourself the best support for the future. So again, these are all things that we do in the 12 week challenge. So if you are not on that wait list, go in the comments, get on the wait list. And I can't wait to see what your Dutch looks like. I love going over them. All right, that's what I got for you guys today. Let me know your questions and I will see you later.